But I never got to do black voices on television. That's what bothered me a little bit. Uh, you know, you can do your own group. Myron Cohen can do Jewish guys, and Pat Cooper can do Italians, and blacks can do blacks, and you can do your own group. But crossing over, it's not so good. You know, they want to hear it. They're afraid of letters. Say, I never got to do some of the from the street, man. What's happening? Ain't no two. I'll be here for a while, man. You see that motherfucker, you tell me to come back here, man, because I'm going to be here, you understand? That's some bullshit, too, man. More or less, you understand? Okay. Hey, you tell them that shit, now. Never got, no, guys were always on me. Black guys were always bugging me about my ass, because I got no ass, you know? <laughs> kind of a straight line from the shoulder to the heels, and, um, Black race has a more pronounced ass anyway, and you know, a regular, you've seen that in National Geographic. I noticed it in the service, you know? It's true, man, it's just, anthropologists will tell you that, you know, if you can wake them up at the party, man, and get their attention. It's true, but at any rate, I was always getting kidded about it, because there are three kinds of asses, basically. I've numbered them, one, two, and C. I was never very good at indexing, but uh, the first one's the fat ass, which you all know, you can't miss it. Yeah. Even in the winter, in a tweed overcoat at the bus stop, you can see, look at the guy in a tweed overcoat and a fat ass over the bus stop there. <laughs> then there's the regular ass, the everyday normal, garden variety, all-American, run of the mill, you've seen one, you've seen them all ass, just regular ass. And then we have the unfortunates, my group, no ass at all. Just, you wear a fat wallet and three handkerchiefs, right? Yeah, you walk out, you can, you know, Black guys used to be on me, man. Say, man, where your ass at? <laughs> My man ain't got no ass. Man, shit, how you hold them pants up, man? <laughs> Stud got no ass, man, shit. Puerto Rican voices was another thing that attracted my ear because I was into, you know, listening to sounds and imitating them. I was a mimic. That was part of being class clown, making fun of uh, all the people around you. And uh, did the priest, did the cops, of course. The cops in New York all had the same voice. Uh, the data, you know, generation voice I was talking about. And they have said things that they say at certain times. If a guy has a heart attack in the street. <laughs> okay, come on, the show's over. Let's go. Come on, man. the show's over. I always called you Johnny. Come on, get out the corner here, Johnny. Never Bud or Mac. Come on, Johnny, let's go, move along, come on. Christ's sakes, you're on the corner. Will you just get out the corner? Come on, Johnny, even your mother. I'm his mother. Never mind, Johnny, get out the corner here. Christ's sakes, she's around the corner. Thin guys. You never said fur. Thin guys, when you get out the corner, thin guys. Puerto Rican, on the other hand, they were speaking a different language. Puerto Ricans talk faster than any Spanish subgroup, I think. And, uh, it sounded like music to me, you know, just so pretty, really, like a flute solo, man, I love it. Even if I didn't know what they meant. And I would bend my ear to hear when I could. Loved it in the subway or a bus when there'd be three Puerto Rican conversations going on at the same time in different pitches and registers. I think it was the Latin that pulled me. It sounded a little like the Latin, you know? That good old Catholic was in there working, and I was hooked, man. <laughs> Got a hypnotic effect, doesn't it? Used to make fun of songs in church. Didn't you make fun of hymns and sacred songs and stuff when you could change the words around? <laughs> Sleep in heavenly peace, I know, went through a lot of changes all over the country. <laughs> oh, Come All You Faithful was the only song ever to successfully combine sex and religion that I could discover anyway. <laughs> but it sounded like a good revival experience, good mass orgasm. Oh, Come All You Faithful. Yeah! <laughs> Get it going. Pretty sad. They, they call it a death day for Dallas to cool you out when you're in puberty. <laughs> I used to listen to the Yankee games in Puerto Rican just to hear the tongue because, I mean, who cared about the Yankees, really? We were a National League neighborhood. In Puerto Rican, uh, hmm, who cared what the game was, right? It sounds so good. And you could follow it because you knew the ball players' names and they'd give those. And if you can count to three, you can follow baseball and those trace. You got it, man. Dos y dos, that's the count. Two and two, and you're home free. And you can follow the emotion of the announcer, right? Cuanta la vecina, calo. 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 Cuanta la vecina
part of the fun listening to Spanish stations waiting for the words that they have to say in English. Tal vez que lo en Broadway. Italian voices I never heard much in my neighborhood till I went to high school downtown when you go to another neighborhood for high school. And uh, Italian street guys, if, if these here were the Irish street guys, the Italian street guy was this guy here. Hey, what, hey, Svachin. Hey, why is this guy is jerking me off here, huh? Who is this scumbag? This scumbag is jerking me off. Scumbag. They always made the distinction, too. Scumbag was a guy, douchebag was a girl, and they always knew. All right? Those who know will attest. Hey, this scumbag, last night he was out, he picked up two douchebags. He didn't call me up, man. Two douchebags. They always adhered to that. I loved that kind of purism, man. Good street, earthy talk, man. Food was always involved in Italian slang, too, because Italians are into food and the oral situation. And, um... Singing, sure, opera and eating, man, and kissing and all that, sure, man, it's all oral. And uh, food shows up in their uh, street lingo, like for money, a very important thing in any culture, right? Money is bananas. Bananas or clams. Hey, you got three clams. Hey, give me, hey, you got half a banana. Get it. You change of a banana. Three clams to get in. This guy had an arm like a fucking eggplant. Huh? <laughs> like an eggplant. Never heard many Jewish voices, mostly came in contact with them as merchants. They were candy store owners in our neighborhood. We had four candy stores. And usually I heard the Jewish voices from over my shoulder as I was streaking out of the candy store with $20 worth of merchandise in my oversized Ike jacket. You fancy pants gangster! Promise, you always promise to put it in the poor box when you grow up. Everything I steal, I'm gonna put it in the poor box when I grow up. <laughs>